Hare Krishna, so we are continuing perfect questions, perfect answers by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and his conversation between him and Bob Cohen, Prabhu, a Peace Corps worker in India. So, this is Shravanam Diaries Podcast, and I'm your host, Sulalita Devidasi. We are on page number 34, starting chapter 4, The Three Modes of Nature. February 28, 1972, continued. Bob, I have read that in life there are three gunas, passion, ignorance, and goodness. I was wishing that you would explain this somewhat, especially what is meant by the mode of ignorance and the mode of goodness. Srila Prabhupada, in goodness you can understand things, knowledge. You can know that there is God, that this world was created by Him, and so many things, actual things, the sun is this, the moon is this, perfect knowledge. If one has some knowledge, even though it may not be perfect, that is goodness. And in passion, one identifies with his material body and tries to gratify his senses. That is passion. And ignorance is animal life. In ignorance, one doesn't know what is God, how to become happy, why we are in this world. For example, if you take an animal to the slaughterhouse, it will go. This is ignorance. But a man will protest. If a goat is to be killed after five minutes, but you give it a morsel of grass, it is happy because, because it is eating. Just like a child, even if you are planning to kill him, he is happy and laughs because he is innocent. That is ignorance. <clears throat> Bob, being in these modes determines your karma, is that correct? Shabrapad, yes. According to the association of the modes of nature, your activities are being contaminated. Karanam guna sangosya sada sadhyoni janmasu. Quote, a man gets higher birth or lower birth according to the association of the gunas or the modes of nature. Unquote. Bhagavad Gita 13.22. Bob, so cheating and things like that, what mode is that? Prabhupada, cheating is mixed passion and ignorance. Suppose one man cheats another. That means he wants to obtain something, he is passionate. But if he commits murder, he doesn't know that he will have to suffer for it. So it is a mixture of passion and ignorance. Bob, and what about when somebody helps another person? Prabhupada. That is goodness. Bob, why is that goodness? You said that goodness is when you have knowledge. So helping someone represents knowledge of what? Shla Prabhupada, if he is ignorant and you are trying to enlighten him, that is goodness. Bob, so giving knowledge is goodness? Shla Prabhupada, yes. Bob, and what about just giving assistance? Prabhupada, that is also goodness. Bob, if a beggar has nothing and you give him alms, Prabhupada, so that may still be goodness. But in your Bowery street, they give someone charity and immediately he purchases a bottle of wine and drinks it. And lies down flat, all laugh. So that is charity. But that is not goodness, that is ignorance. Bob, charity in ignorance? Srila Prabhupada, there are three kinds of charities. Good, passionate and ignorant. Goodness is giving charity where charity must be given. Just like this Krishna consciousness movement. If anyone gives charity to this movement, that is goodness because it is spreading God consciousness, Krishna consciousness. That is goodness. 
And if one gives charity for some return, that is passion. And if somebody gives in charity in an improper place and time, without respect, and to an unworthy person, just like the Bowery man, that is ignorance. But Krishna says, Yad karoshi yadashnasi yajuhoshi dadasiyat. Quote, Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that as an offering to me. Unquote. Bhagavad Gita 9.27 If Krishna takes your offering, that is the perfection of charity. Or anyone who is a representative of Krishna, if he takes it, that is perfection. Bob, and what kind of charity is it when you give food to somebody who is hungry? Shri Prabhupada, well, that depends on the circumstances. For example, if a doctor has forbidden his patient to take any solid food, and if the patient is asking, give me some solids, and if you give him solid food in charity, then you're not doing good to him. That is ignorance. Bob, are the devotees beyond accumulating karma? These devotees, do they feel karma? Do they work in these modes? Are they in the mode of goodness? Shri Prabhupada, they are above goodness. Shudha Sattva. The devotees are not in this material world, they are in the spiritual world. That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 14.26. Mamchayo vyabicharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samatityaitan brahma bhuyaya kalpate. Quote, one who engages in full devotional service, you unfailing, unfailing in all circumstances at once, transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman." Unquote. Devotees are neither in goodness, passion, nor ignorance. They are transcendental to all these qualities. Bob, a devotee who is very faithful reaches this stage? Shri Prabhupada, yes, you can become a devotee as they have become. It is not difficult. Simply, you have to engage yourself in the transcendental, loving service of the Lord. That's all. Bob, what is the status of service minus devotion? Shri Prabhupada, hmm? That is not service, that is business. Everyone laughs. <laughs> For example, here in Mayapur, we have employed a contractor. That is not service, that is business. Is it not? Sometimes they will advertise. Our customers are our masters, is it not? But in spite of the flowery language, our customers are our masters. This is business because nobody is qualified, nobody is a qualified customer unless he pays. <laughs> That's a very, very, very important difference to, to realize actually. Our customers are our masters. That is business because nobody is a qualified customer unless he pays. But service is not like that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays to Lord Krishna. Quote, you do whatever you like, you do whatever you like, but still you are my worshipable Lord, Unquote. That is service. Quote, I don't ask any return from you, Unquote. That is service. When you expect some return, that is business. Bob. I wish to gain more knowledge of God and be able to feel God's presence more. I feel life has little meaning without this. Shri Prabhupada, yes, 
if you misuse this human life, human form of life, then it is a great loss. Human life is a great chance given to the living entity to get out of the entanglement of material existence. Bob, I feel thankful that I've been able to ask these questions. Yes, you can learn more and more. Questions and answers are required. They are beneficial to all. Sutta Goswami says in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.5 Munaya sadu prishtoham bhavad bir loka mangalam yat krita krishna samprashno yenatma su prasidati. Quote, O sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are relevant to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self." Unquote. So questions about Krishna are very good. When you discuss and hear about Krishna, that is Loka Mangalam, auspicious for everyone, both the questions and the answers. Bob, I am attracted to devotional life, but Still, my connections at home, my marriages, I'm engaged, Shabrapa. No, no, there are so many marriages, he indicates Shamasundara. He is married. Marriage is no barrier. I told you that there are four orders of spiritual life. Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasa. So after Brahmachari life, one can marry although it is not obligatory. One may remain Naishtika Brahmachari, unmarried for his whole life, but a Brahmachari may marry. And after marriage, there is Vanaprastha life. This means that one is a little aloof from family. The husband and wife live separately. At that time, there is no sex life. Then, when he is fully re renounced, detached from family life, he takes sannyasa. Bob, does the sannyasi forget his wife completely then? Shlaprapad, yes, forgetting is not very difficult if you try to forget. Out of sight, out of mind, all laugh. <laughs> Just as I have my wife and children, grandchildren, everything. But out of sight, out of mind, that's all. Therefore, Vanaprastha, Sanyasa, everything is nicely arranged by the Vedic system. Jai. <clears throat> so, we have completed the... Uh, was it third chapter? Yes, it was fourth chapter. We have completed fourth chapter and tomorrow we're going to read about... Becoming Pure, Chapter 5. So, thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. And we shall see you next time. And just so that it would not be like a cliffhanger for those who have tuned in um, out of context. Vanaprastha and Sanyasa, when one is a little... Like, Vanaprastha is when one is little separate... There are husbands and wives who do live together and there are husbands and wives who separate for that period of Vanaprastha um, because they're trying to actually dive into spiritual life more intensely and that's why Prabhupada mentioned there is no like sex life at that stage because you know this I when we will be reading Light of Bhagavata I'm really looking forward to read and put it out <laughs> in the podcast form because over there Prabhupada really mentions about this how important it is to actually retire this vanaprastha means actually retirement retirement not only from just you know like constant work in the material world on expansion of the family life 
but retirement of basically material activities which are fr- fr- not fr- just frustrating but are exhausting and are taking a lot of time to maintain and just like diving into spiritual life right before we're about to have the final lesson of passing away so I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I don't. I don't know how to actually advertise, or not to advertise, or how to present this um, stage of life in a in a way that um, somebody who doesn't know anything about Varnashrama would really get a nice impression about it. But all I can say is that me and my friends, <laughs> we are we when we're discussing this part. You know, when you're married. So much time is dedicated to the family life, naturally. To the spouse, to the children, to the whole society, to your work, to maintenance, to, you know, just basically survival. But by God's grace, when you enter Vanaprastha, technically speaking, you just have all the time in the world to chant Hare Krishna and to read scriptures and shastras and discuss and just dive into your deity worship and you know just have all the juice <laughs> that you couldn't taste before because of your responsibilities your obligations so like i just like when when you read it like that out of context maybe or complete a chapter out of context in this way that it may seem that you know proper says out of sight out of mind everything is nicely arranged so Sanyasi forgets his wife completely, you know, but that's the negative side, not not the negative, but the kind of the, um, yeah, the um, negative side, not in negative bad, but negative as a, there is no, like, presence of the wife, but what a Sanyasi does, like, being completely like dependent on the Lord and traveling and preaching and we have so many beautiful sannyasis in our movement so you know just just give you a glimpse of how actually it is a nicely arranged system and like sannyas is not obligatory and separation of the husband and wife at the vanaprastha stage is not obligatory there are very nice vanaprastas that I know who are in their 60s and their 70s, they live together, but naturally, you know, you just, like, I see them and I get very inspired because they just, you know, they just try to completely dive into Krishna consciousness and spiritual life, and, you know, you don't really have that taste anymore for material and sensual pleasures because you're enjoying something much, much higher than that, which is called Param Drishtva Nivartante, higher taste. So, yes, and all of us, <laughs> like all of the people that I know, they are eagerly looking forward to <laughs> Vanaprastha stage because we'll be able to read whatever, like everything we wanted to read, we'll be able to chant for as many hours as we wanted to chant. So, just wanted to put it out there. So, we shall continue with the book tomorrow. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in today again and Hare Krishna.